Hey everybody, it's Bus, continuing our playthrough of the Path of Champions. Today, we're taking on the one and a half star quest, the Prodigal Explorer, going up to battle with Ezreal, and using our one star Aatrox. So, to get you familiar with our Aatrox, that the one star power, when an equipped ally strikes, you reduce the cost of a random card in your hand by one. Lots of strike tie-ins, lots of equipment and darkened tie-ins in this set, or in this deck list, I should say. Uh, and this is our main way of getting Aatrox on the board. Typically, you're not able to do a lot of uh, playing of sixth cost champions in the Path of Champions just because it's too slow. But the Infernal Chains allow us to uh, cheat him into play a little bit faster. In terms of the relics, we're still using the Armadillo Shell. This will be our last video uh, at the common relic level. Uh, and so we're taking this since it lets us uh, potentially chain off multiple strikes with the Aatrox flip card. So Aatrox has the uh, triple single combat flip card, whatever it's called. You get uh, a three mana combat, a two mana combat, a one mana combat. If you're wanting to fight three units in a row, uh, tough goes a long way in ensuring Aatrox's survival. And so, uh, that's the deck, that's the strategy. Let's head on in to Ezreal, fighting the most challenging part of the battle, actually clicking into the adventure. <laughs> and here we go. All right, P and Z lands in the middle. Karma, the Ionian representation for P and Z, <laughs> right there in the middle. So what do we got here? Anything useful? Uh, the, the Chrono Breaks are okay, uh, getting basically a three mana rally nothing to complain about there uh the sparring student not really strong here but uh that's only in the sense of we're not going to have a lot of summon abilities we're not going to be excuse me chaining a lot of units onto the board the 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 nice thing about starting with the sparring student is it lets us completely ignore an early game play right we're, we're typically looking to uh balance with this deck trying to uh, have enough early game plays and then enough equipment to put them on uh, and if we can just eliminate that need for early game plays because we have a sparring student on the board, it really lets us focus in on the equipment. And so there is some power there. Last but not least, Slow But Steady is the uh, highest power choice here. This is the strongest one available, but uh, it doesn't play well with Aatrox. He doesn't start with any slow spells. We're focusing on cheap units and equipment. It's tough to actually find a good usage for Slow But Steady here. So i going to go with the sparring student on this one. All right, so battling the Hextech Observatory at the beginning of the game, all players summon a Hextech Observatory. That refunds you the mana you play on your first spell of the turn. All right, bunch of expensive bros. No, thank you. You know, <laughs> we'll, we'll take a mulligan here and see if we can't find an equipment for our sparring student. We do not. How about now? There we go. There's the Dark Aegeus. It, it it doesn't look uh, as compelling when you start out with both the, the, the two copies of Forsaken Bakai in your hand, but uh, it, if you just want to imagine if we'd gotten to start off this first turn with a... Um, start off the first turn with the Sparring Student and then play the one mana Bandle City equipment on it, and then already have our equipment done, start getting that spell mana back. Lots of really nice and strong synergies if... Uh, uh, the, if we start with that, because we have the sparring student. All right. Well, all of our units are getting gunned down. All right. Reggie comes to the party. Our Bakai only costs one mana now, so we'll definitely get him on the board. Found another equipment. We should be ready to go finishing this one off. Only got the opponent down to one. So close to the lethal, just <laughs> just not quite there. He's bringing that heat on all of our dudes today. Not very nice, friend. Not very nice. All right, well, we'll load the Aegeus up onto the cultist. Questionable attack uh, with Reggie, but, you know, <laughs> ain't, nothing, ain't nothing wrong with some aggression, I guess. I'm on board with that. I love seeing it, and so that's cool with me. Now we can bring in our lethal. GG, friend. All right, so where are we at? 
anything useful? Not really. Uh, the, the the Reaver's Rogue can do some kind of neat things with this deck. We do have the Sparring Student and the, the Cultists to, to get the one-cost thing going. Maybe we look towards the Reaver's Row and just see what we can do. The, I think the probable take here is the Ice Veil Cultist, giving your uh, equipped allies overwhelmed. Very, very strong, but I want to go for a, a bit of the memeage here, see if we can't get a, a high-powered play out of the Reaver's Row. All right, into the champions. Teemo, something with a one cost, right? I <laughs> didn't quite find it. Uh, I think the take here is probably Zed. He's just such a, a super high-powered champion, but I want to see if we can't find something cool to work in with this. And oh... Ooh, we called our shot and found the Teemo. That's what we're going with here. I'm on board. I am on board. And so, into the next set of nodes. Up top, we have a shop. To the middle, we have a spell chest. At the bottom, we have a used cask salesman. I don't remember this. Let me get him pulled up on the site. Okay, so if you're not familiar, we're just on the ftpbus.com site. If you go up to the top, there'll be uh, the utilities header to where you can click on events. That will pull up the, uh, the collection of the exclamation points. That's all of the event uh, nodes. We can search for the cask that'll pull up the used cask salesman, and so he sells uh, uh, he sells copies of cards from our deck. Or hang on, sell all copies of a card from your deck. So I think you get to uh, get a mana return on removing a card from your deck. I'm not super into that. Like the the Aatrox deck already starts off pretty good, right? The only card I'm usually looking to remove is the uh, the Violent Discord, and so I don't feel like we need to heavily come in and cut a lot of cards out of our deck. So uh, let's actually head up here to the top of the shop, see if we can't find another cool one drop to go with. And so on to Jay Madarda. At the round start, the the foe creates a fleeting. Oh no, everybody creates the fleeting Sumpworks map. Rising Spell Force or suit up. It costs one. Gotcha. Give me some of them. Give me some of them elusives to throw on our uh, uh, to to throw on our equipped units. All right, and we got the Reavers Row. We're gonna we're gonna make something happen with this today. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Feeling pretty good. Oh, he drops a gearhead. Uh, everybody's got the suit up. I was hoping that we would get to play the Darkened Staff and get something going with it, but. Everybody's playing suit up to. Oh no, he's just got it. What are you doing? Uh, oh, he don't. He doesn't have the mana. That's what the problem is. Okay, Whew. I'm losing it. Like as soon as we got the dude on board, I was like, oh no, he's gonna have a four four, but have quick attack, and then he didn't have any mana to to punish us there. So crisis averted. What you looking for? All right, both of our dudes can survive this combat now. Looks pretty good to me. Get a mana back. The Rising Spell Force is ready. I'm ready for this Reaver's Row. I don't think we'll win the game before <laughs> before the Reaver's Row pops. Got all these glorious 1-1s one on the board. It's going to be useful. All right, so we bring the attack in. Why not Sumpworks map? We're not lethal, are we? <laughs> well, I guess we can lethal with this poison dart. Let's see if opponent digs his way out of this mess. A high note. Okay, okay. So we'll get to do it, right? We'll get to, we'll get to play the Reaver's Row. Excellent. I guess we would have lethal there if we did play the Reaver's Row, right? We would have grown our unit. Oh, it's on the countdown when the bonus comes in. Okay, never mind. All right, he's coming at us with the Sumpworks map. Not that big of a deal. Get some blocks in. Sure. Long as our, our one drops survive, get the bonus off the Reaver's Row, everything will be okay. We're going to achieve our master game plan. <laughs> Here it comes. Check all these stats. Look at that. Look at that. 6-3 elusive tough impact. People out here complaining about the keyword soup. It's been a few months, but I appreciate it on the Elkin. He's doing the he's doing the work today. Alright. Nice set of battles.
All right, so what have we got? I am on board with the Zonite Urchin. Just give us another way to take advantage of that Reaver's Row. All looks good to me. Coming into the shop, I love Crush. This is one of my favorite powers, giving all allies overwhelm. Let's check our cards real quick, though. Nothing too exciting, I don't think. Out of the way, Jinning Writing, Aporo is not that bad. The the strike-based cards are all pretty good in a deck like this, since we get kind of double usage out of it with the strike giving us a cost reduction and then uh, working towards all of the Darken abilities with the World Ender, but I don't think we need an additional one. We always have the Furious Strikes in here. Let's just go with the Crush. Move on. Okay, so Amateur Aeronaut at the round start. Each unit with two or less power has a 50-50 shot of either getting stunned or gaining elusive. We're gaining an update. All right, try that again. Updates out of the way. So what do we got? Got a one drop. We'll hang on to that. Equipments in Reaver's Rows are what we're really looking for here. All the one drops, though. We're ready. We're definitely that Reaver's Row deck now. Equipment. Hey, there we go. Called it. I stunned our friend. I was really, really hoping that we got a, uh, a elusive instead of a, a stun, but, you know. We're, we're still going to do some crushing here. And he stuns Artimo. Not very nice, man. Not very nice. This is exactly what Timo needs. This is what's been holding Timo back. Constructed is not having, not having tough. <laughs> and so, oh no, he just got stunned right away. Uh, fine. I guess at least all of his one one ones got stunned as well. So we can't actually kill the crush bot before combat. Depending on who he blocks, we might be able to. Oh, we don't have the mana to Furious Wielder. Okay, I was going to say, we might be able to Furious Wielder in the middle of combat just to get that extra Overwhelm damage in. And if we had the mana, we certainly could have done that, but a little bit short of casting the spell. All right, Darken Staff for sure. I'm on it. It's going to hit us with a little bit of... Oh, he's not going to get... Not going to get in with too many elusives. We have that... Uh, the, the strike ability on our Teemo. Let's just prevent as much damage as we can. Okay, taking three. Not that bad. What's this? We got a free Discord now. It's safe to just throw onto the Amateur Aeronaut. He's going to have to block with it. Maybe we'll get to chunk in an extra point of damage that way. We'll see who, who survives the uh, the initial onslaught of things. Is this going to be enough? Find out. He's only got one health units out here, so we should be able to get some overwhelm damages in. All right. Good game, friend. So what do we got? Zolani? That's <laughs> that's what you're always looking for in these situations, right? Just a gigantic dude. I don't think we're, we're too interested in that. Uh, Tear of the Goddess on Vault Breaker seems quite strong, though. I'm not sure if the copies carry the tier. We'll find out, though. If they do, that's going to be a, a lot of damage that we can really come in and punch through. Now we either have an item chest or a shop. We just spent a lot of money at the previous shop, so let's hit up the item chest. Minus one cost to Furious Wielder is nice. Uh, there is another copy of the Elkin down here, though, with a draw a card attached to him. I think that's going to do it for me. Now we can come and cut a card. Going to take out the Violent Discord. It's just trash. And on to Battle Karma. And so, game start. All players start with 10 mana gems. Who's ready for some of that turn one Aatrox coming out of this? <laughs> That's the appropriate time to be dropping your Aatrox is on turn one. 
Hmm. We've got Reaver's Row as well, though. Let's see. We're, we're, well, I guess we don't get, like, punished for, for the, the Reaver's Row and not having it on the first turn. We want to play it... We want to play it next turn, right? So we get to use it two turns from now. We'll see how relevant that becomes if we're able to, to get it down at the right time. But, I mean, we're probably just going to be out here. Uh, we're just going to be out here dropping world enders as early as we can. <laughs> it's, it's much easier to drop a world ender when you start with 10 mana crystals. All right, he's down to three cards in hand. It's a little risky when you uh, you spend the removal spell on something that isn't karma, but uh, I feel like when we we have the world under, we're, we're just in like such a spot to uh, overwhelm everything that she's doing, and so I think it's safe enough. Let's see. This turn, we're gonna play everything that isn't the world under. Here comes Timo. So far, so good. Reaver's Row. I'm going to say, shouldn't be able to take down our Aatrox. He's going to need, like, a, a, a Twin Disciplines, I guess, would do it. But he needs a, a good combat trick here. I don't know if the Karma deck even has combat tricks in it. Uh, Teemo. That's not the draw we were looking for. Sure. And we just want to go ahead and world ender now. Get that get that big that big level up on the Teemo. Does this mess up our Teemo in terms of the Reaver's row though? Does his he comes to the darken and loses his one mana cost? <laughs> Why didn't you flip? What happened? Why didn't Timo tra transform into the thing? I only speaks through me. From shores to hills, we know every acre. Well, I guess what we got what we wanted. We wanted, <laughs> we wanted Timo to get the, the Reaver's Row ability, but... Weird. Did he deny it and I just missed it? Huh. Why didn't we get our equipment either? Oh, it's already equipped. All right, we'll let, the, we'll let that one slide, Riot, but... Something's wrong. There's some kind of shenanigan happening here. Oh. That's, that's so weird, right? We're going to put this staff onto Teemo. What? I don't know. Something happened, man. Something happened. All right, welcome to big boys. Everybody's got overwhelmed. All right, that Teemo flip we didn't we didn't miss. I guess we can go ahead and throw down the puff cap. Like, I don't really want it, right? I don't want to draw another copy of Teemo, but with the opponent at two, maybe we'll maybe we'll do a touch of high rolling and just just kill him before the game goes on. It's so weird. All right. Thanks for showing me that Wuju style before the combat actually happens. <laughs> I think it's still a safe block with Aatrox in front of the Karma, but it's good to know that the combat tricks are going, and then just recall your own units. It's a strategy, you know? <laughs> you, you see this on occasion from the, uh, from the AI. Uh, it's not a good strategy, but it is a strategy. All right, then we should be able to end this next turn with just a open attack from Timo. Hey, 
All right. About to see you, Karma. Get on out of here. Ah, the puff caps got him. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Karma didn't squeeze them butt cheeks quite hard enough. She didn't. Uh, <laughs> she didn't anticipate with only 15 puff caps in the deck. Lesson learned. Lesson learned, my friend. So what do we got here? Eight trucks with a bunch of flashbang cards. None of these are particularly strong. We'll just put the the satchel on to plant the uh, plant the traps onto the powers. Anything cool here? Not really. Quick draw is always serviceable. Cards you draw this round cost one less. Uh, there's nothing wrong with cheating on mana. Okay, moving on up, a couple epic chests to the right. We got an epic item or an epic spell. Then going up top, there's a gold chest. So definitely want to chase after these epics. Let's go towards the item chest, right? I like just loading up these one-cost units we have with some really nice equipment, and so we'll head, head towards that. So, Fey Blade Twirler, at the round start, you stun the player's weakest unit. Not very nice. Not very nice. All right, though, we got a wielder, we got a one drop. Let's hang on to the old equipment. Get these early game plays rolling. Oh, we got the staff. I, I, I was wondering how we were going to get all this going, but picking up the, the card we just drew for the turn at zero mana, quite good. Let's just get everybody on board this round, right? Look at that, look at that. Do we just... Uh... <laughs> I don't. I don't think this. Uh, this OTK is. It is a zero mana vault breaker, but I think the copy beyond the first is going to cost mana. Let, let's see. Let's see. Yeah. See, this one costs one now. Okay. Take away my fun, Riot. <laughs> well, I might as well cast it a bunch of times, right? Oh, that was going to be so sweet. Just going infinite with the Vault Breaker. It is good to know that the uh, the the fleeting copies, the generated copies, do get the value from the tier of the Goddess. And so uh, if we manage to um, find another tier, another way to reduce the cost, created cards cost one less would do it, uh, then we could go infinite with the Vault Breaker. All right, no Darkens in here. I guess the Elkin is actually a reasonable draw since it draws a card once it comes into play. Our, our deck is very well-tuned to that, uh, that cards cost one less ability. I, I just kind of, like, glossed over it because it's, like, it's a good mid-tier ability, right? There's nothing wrong with getting all of the extra mana, but it plays quite strong with this one-drop heavy deck that we have here. All right, sure. We'll take down your unit, get those extra points of damage in. We might just have to play Aatrox to get these kills here. We gotta, we gotta get some more uh, big stats on board. Sure. I was gonna say something like "get darted, bruh," <laughs> but he has the uh, he has the combat trick to get out of it. I see, I see. All right, we should be good to go now, though. Aatrox is ready to end this one. It's got all the cards today. Steel Tempest, Concussive Palm. Did he cast them both on the same unit? <laughs> it's a strategy, man. It's a strategy. May not be a good one, but it is a strategy. All right, well, let's go ahead and get a, get a Dark and Flip in. End those worlds, bro. 
So we should get to at least show off the idea that we have with the armadillo cloak in this. I mean, it, the, the game is clearly done at this point. But uh, when we have these Deathbringer sweeps, right, we're going to sweep a, a three attack unit and then a three attack unit and then whatever else the opponent plays. And so it gives our Aatrox a bit of survivability, especially now as we look to say Deathbringer sweep uh, Yone. You don't want any more of that? <laughs> you say, you say no thank you, bust. So we'll have to stop there. But right, we wouldn't have been able to do uh, quite as much if he didn't have tough. He's going to regenerate it all back next turn. This one is more than done now. Well, I say that until opponent, <laughs> until opponent drops five stuns on us next turn. But for the for all intents and purposes, this one should be done. All right. Good game, Fayblade Twirler. All right, so what do we got? I don't like the Darken Halberd, right? You see these equipment, you get really excited about them. We could probably pull it off in this deck. Uh, since we have all of these one drops and um, actually this is probably not that bad we have all the one drops and then my kind of thought with it well we're gonna have to draw pretty heavy to make this work right the thing I'm kind of starting to think of is like well we have the the game start ability to it and we have the thing to where you draw a card it costs one less so it should cost zero mana on the first turn of every game but we need to have a one drop to go along with it uh, to get the sparring student going we'll let the halberd go and just add fearsome to the elkin all right, so into the item chest. What is this? Oh, it's not not nearly as a good one. I saw the Reaver's Row and got excited, but it's when it's summoned or destroyed, you heal. Not worried about it. We'll just put the plus one, plus one on the Darkened Staff. It's the, the cheapest option we have there. Into the shop. Buy a power. Armored Gearheads. Man, I want to I wanna go back and pick up the, uh, the, the Darkened Halberd if we're going to be starting with Gearheads. All right, well, we're definitely taking that one. Let's check our other cards out here, though. Not too interested in any of these, I don't think. The Scar Grounds is actually quite good with the opposing units having minus one attack, but uh, that's not really... Uh, that's good in the general sense, and what our deck is trying to do, it's not necessary. So we'll let that one go. Yeah, let's just buy the gearheads. Moving on. And so, ooh, an Epic Champion item chest to the right or a normal shop. So we just spent a bunch of money at the shop. We'll head towards the, uh, the, the, the Epic Chest. Now, when one of the foe's units is supported, grant it plus one, plus one. Okay, well, that looks like a reasonable start. I'm not... Uh, I'm going to hang on to the poison dart. Uh, I, I don't know what support units this deck plays. It's obviously got Herald of Spring, since that's the name of the deck, but uh, I'm not sure if we're going to run into things like... Uh, young witch that we can target down with the poison dart. Probably just discard it anyways. And they say, eh. Uh, once, I, once I started to think of the options, I think there's really just the one uh, that's out there causing issues. All right, the card draw happens. We draw Teemo. Nice full board for the first turn of the game. I guess the second turn of the game. Let's boom him. All right, opponent won some combats. I'm not going to play the Elk in this turn. Uh, that kind of requires us to draw one drop to get to use the mana. Now that we're on to the next turn, uh, we might pick up a play that we can just continue to drop for free. Okay, okay. Opponent bringing some damages at us. Just go ahead and clear out what we can. We're gonna, we're gonna refill the board here. It's like, uh, well, uh, I'm wanting to play the Reaver's Row, but I feel like the game's probably gonna end before it's relevant. We'll see. And our hand does get kind of messed up with the Reaver's Row, because if you take a look at our our units, 
Timo's a zero, Elkin's a zero, Elkin's a zero, those aren't going to get the bonuses off the Reaver's row. So let's uh, let's be a little bit more mindful of about of what's about to happen there. Ooh, that's how you get a victory, though. Send them all in. Drop these vault breakers. There we go. Got to get my APM up. All right, one for everybody. You get a vault breaker. You get a vault breaker. Oprah's out here passing them all out. Congratulations, guys. You all got the vault breaker. Arguably better than a car, right? <laughs> you're not you're not paying taxes on the vault breakers, so you're welcome. All right, another elk and another item. Sounds good. Got a kitty wanting to hang out. Let me see if he wants to get up here. Oh, come on, bud. There he is. It says, what up, internet? I'm here for the Path of Champions. Say hello. <laughs> he does not. He does not like that. That's okay, though. You're here to help. And Oh, oh so many good ones here. When I'm summoned, refill your mana is what I'm immediately drawn towards with Aatrox, but he's so expensive, like, we're probably not going to have any other plays beyond him. So I'm just going to load him up with the Iceborne Gauntlet to, to get the capture on summon. Uh, moving into the healer. Is there even anything we want to cut? We probably just cut the Reaver's Row at this point, right? If all of our one-cost units are going to now cost zero, then it's not really going to do anything. And then on to Ezreal. So the foe's spells cost one. At the round start, they get a fleeting static shock. And then after he's leveled up, the static shock becomes a true shot barrage. Gotcha. Thankfully for us, we are playing this really like one drop heavy deck, but everything's pretty resilient, right? The initial units we have, not so much, like the armed gearheads are all going to get killed by static shocks, but our, our Elkins uh, make it through the day. The, uh, the sparring student can if we've played a unit. So we got some, we got some good options there. And I was wondering if this was going to happen. Opponent has a, a, a really bad habit uh, of seeing like multiple one health units on the board, but then doing one damage to a uh, one health unit and one damage to the face. So I was surprised to see them not do it here. All right, we've got an Elkin. Drawing more zeros. Looks good to me. Got another Elkin. More zeros. Perfect. Do we want to go deep with the urchins? Like how many how many more one cost units can we still draw at this point? We've got so many Elkin in this deck. Alright. We don't need a puff cap pup. <laughs> maybe maybe we'll set it up to where we just OTK with uh with sparring student today, right? If we just play our whole deck on the first turn, then the sparring student can uh can get all the damages in. I dig it. I dig it. Alright, a lot of strikes coming through that turn, but none of our units had equipment on it, so we didn't get any of those cost reductions. Our Aatrox is still costing 6 out here. He's going to be an expensive bro on the day. Oh, he's got Fearsome? Well, I guess Ezreal, he can't cast the, can't cast the spells anyways. He's tapped out at this point. Getting a little sweaty over here, Ezreal. I'll drop a little salt on it. Just a little bit. So, <laughs> how many cards do we have left? 22? It's like, do, do we get to the point to where uh, we just start overriding stuff? It's like, I really want to come in and just get these get these big lethals with, uh, with the sparring student and just replaying all of our one-cost cards. It's not going to happen today, unfortunately, but... I mean, I guess we could have looked to just cycled into Vault Breaker. You know, that's a, actually a, a pretty realistic outcome that uh, that gives us a victory. All right, he's adding dudes. 
We're adding Aatrox. We should be good to go from this point. Watch and learn, Watch and learn this, Ezreal. Bring in that Deathbringer sweep. Alright, who do you think's gonna win this one? Who's got it? Who's taking it down? My money's on bust. And all the Elkin friends out here. Drop a little cupcake. Send in the squad. Call it a GG. Alright, so yeah. Not a bad set of battles. Not a bad set of battles. I'm glad we're getting to, uh, to, to find some of these games that... Uh, work towards our deck building problem, right? Again, the, the, the problem that you have with the Aatrox deck is finding cheap units, finding the equipment to put on them, uh, and then having a little bit of interactivity. Uh, and it makes things a lot easier when you have some of these powers to where you start with Sparring Student or you start with the Armed Gearhead uh, so that you're kind of guaranteed to have that target in the early game. Because what you're going to start to find as you uh, assemble this deck and start looking at your mulligans and stuff is you're going to have to just mulligan for units. Because if you have a handful of like three equipment and no units, then they don't do anything. And so it's A, good to kind of alleviate that issue by always having the unit. But then uh, it also makes it have kind of uh, more balanced mulligans when uh, we have that unit on the board you can potentially hang on to one of those equipment in your opener, and then you don't have to worry so much about having those awkward hands to where you have four units and no equipment and you don't get to activate your abilities, or you have four equipment and no units and you don't get to, to play the equipment on anything. And so I've been really happy with the likes of these uh, these uh, powers that put the units on the board, the sparring student, the armed gearhead here. Uh, there's the Poros one, there's the sting officer one. Uh, there's a handful of these ways to get that guy on the board. Very powerful with Aatrox. And so, good stuff. I had fun with that. I hope you did too, because that was going to do it for us today. And so I hope everyone enjoyed the video. Hope you maybe learned a thing or two along the way and had a good time watching. This is Bustin' Weed. Thank you for being here.